everybody, Barry from h &W Machine Repair. Um, today's video is actually, we're redoing a, one of our very first videos we ever did because we have had more requests for this than anything else. We're going to be disassembling the Bridgeport R8 spindle and we're also going to be reassembling a spindle in the same video. Now, the first step in this is remove the lock washer. So you can see the lock washer has the tab folded up, so I have a small screwdriver that I've got at an angle. And all I'm doing here is getting the tab down out of the way. Okay, next we're going to put it in our vise. We have copper jaws on our vise, which is by far preferable. Okay. Hook, hook span a wrench. As long as you are going out to the the bottom of your spindle is to the left, it will be down. Okay, sometimes they're much tighter than others. This one really wasn't on that, that tight. Remove your lock washer, your lock nut. Now you'll notice this thing's tapered. The taper goes down. Then remove your lock washer. As long as you got it out in one piece, we'll be able to reuse this. Now we're gonna go over to our arbor press. Now you notice I have two pieces of steel that have a V cut in them. If you had something like that, that comes in very handy. You don't even need an arbor press to do this that way. But we have an arbor press, we're gonna use it. So put it under, knock the top bearing out. Get your spacer. And now what we have left are is our um, dirt shield, the bearings, and our spacers. So I bring this out to here and I have a leather hammer. And what you do is hold on to it here. And which I, I constantly am bumping them back together. Now we have the spindle apart. So here we have our spindle our dirt shield, our spindle bearings, and our washers. At this point, we're going to pause. I'm gonna get everything cleaned up, ready to go back together. And in just a moment, I'll be back to reassemble the spindle. Okay, so now we are ready to reassemble our spindle. The first thing that you always wanna check is your spacers that go between your spindle bearings. These need to mic the same height. So just hit, get your mics. And if you feel like they're out around, you can mic them in a few different places, but three, four, okay. Yep, these mic exactly the same, 1.342, uh, roughly. So, that being good, let's go over our spindle rebuild kits. We actually offer two spindle rebuild kits. We have the standard kit that has open bearings. These are um, NSKs made in Japan. Then we have the Timken, which are sealed bearings, which are made in the USA. Um, these cost slightly more. Um, and these are what Bridgeport currently uses in their brand new machines. I have been using this set for 20 some years. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Japanese set. But the one thing I'll tell you about the Timken set, because they're sealed, you can't tell where the thrust is. So you have to read the outer race and where the writing is on the outer race on each one, that writing faces each other when you reassemble. So let's get back to the set I'm gonna use. Open it up. Let's break down what we have in here. We obviously have written instructions, your spindle bearings, the ramekin of grease, your um, special set screw, and your caught alignment screw, then your upper bearing. Let's get this broke down and let's get started on this thing. Okay, open up your ramekin of grease. Make sure your hands are clean when you're doing this, please. 
Okay, you notice there's a outer, your outer race is thick here and thin here. We're gonna pack it on the thin side. Take a little bit in your hand and your fingers. Put it on your bearing and then use, palm, use the palm of your hand, squeeze down. You're not gonna use all this grease, but. There, once it comes through, you notice where maybe a quarter, maybe a hair more and a quarter on that side and a little bit less here, that's where you wanna stop, right there. Now do the same thing to the other bearing. There you go. Now I just set them back down on the original packing so we keep things clean. Hand cleaned up. We are now ready to reassemble our spindle. So you have your spindle. First thing things go on is your dirt shield. Notice the dirt shield's got a flat and a ridge down. The ridge down goes down on the spindle. So slide it down over the spindle. First thing will be your first spindle bearing. Now, again, we have a a thin race and a thick race. The thick race is going to face each other. So you put your first spindle bearing down, kind of keep your hand here, turn it upside down, put it into your fixture. Obviously, if you don't have a uh, arbor press, you'll be tapping it with your soft hammer or leather hammer. But again, we have an arbor press, so just, notice how I'm just kind of bouncing it to make sure everything's fitting. spacers on, the inner spacer, outer spacer, put on your other bearing, again same thing, the thick side of the race is going down. So the bottom one goes up, the top one goes down. Same thing again, put it on, just kind of try to keep it centered here. Once you have it on, I mean, you could move this if you had to, but you wanted to make sure it feels like it's going to be on there snug. Pick it up again. Put on our top spacer. We'll open up our upper bearing. Slide it down on. Back in our fixture. Ready to go back over to the vise. Kind of spin it, everything feels good, looks good. You notice how the grease is starting to spread out in there. So the problem with overpacking these, you can create heat and then your spindle will get hot. Okay, we are now ready to put on our washer and our lock nut. Now you notice how this is one where it was um, in the tab. I personally like to bend these up slightly especially with the new bearing being a shielded bearing. So take my wrench. I've actually had people ask me why we don't include this lock washer in the kit, primarily because as you saw on this one, very rarely does it need to be replaced. About 95% of the time it comes out in good shape. So I don't really believe I, that we should you know, charge people money for something they're not going to need. So, okay. Lock washer. Slide over the spindle. There's a slot right here. Goes down in the slot. Put your lock nut on. Just thread it down by hand. Sometimes this doesn't thread down as easy as others. So if it starts and it's a little tight, don't be alarmed. Okay, now we're going to put it in our vice with the jaws now the opposite direction because obviously we want to be able to go this go down towards us again take your your hook spanner tighten it up now i use a uh, trusty cook flat flat hammer this is the uh tc 43 bpf 
Wonderful hammer. Probably my favorite hammer I own. And you're just going to go nice and snug. There is no torque setting. Bridgeport does not have torque setting. So my philosophy is go tight. I get it about there. Then I look and I see, all right, where am I at on my spindle that I can find a close fit? So I look at it. And right there, that's where we're going to go. I'm going to give it just a little more tap to get it to where that lines up. And don't be alarmed, it almost never lines up to the one you took it off. Okay. Once you get it on, just take your punch and punch the tab down in. There we go. Got that tight. We have that tight. Now, the next step is to put our cloud alignment key in. This one is completely gone in here. Let's take our wrench. Now this one did not even have the special set screw in it. Okay, so get your, put your set screw, your socket set screw in. Or I me, mean, sorry, your cloud alignment screw in. Getting ahead of myself. When you start feeling the tab coming out the bottom, take one of the collets that you use and slide it up in there, because what you want to make sure is you don't go too far. So I go till it backs off, then I back it off about a quarter turn, take the collet out, take my set screw, my socket set screw. Now these things can sometimes be a little difficult. Now one thing you can do, and I normally like to do, is add a touch of uh, a blue Loctite, but you don't have to. This one, when you put it on, you want to keep it near the end because if you go in too far, you're going to start threading your collet screw in. So just kind of keep your finger in there. All right. And then once you start, get tight, again, just go in a little bit. Get nice and tight. There we go. Now, one last time, put your collet in just to double check. Yep, we're still good. Okay. So we have this assembled. Now we're going to put this back in the quill. This part I didn't demonstrate on the disassembly. So just kind of watch this part and obviously do it in reverse. Put your hole where your set screw goes up on the top. Okay, I'm going to slide it in. I'm going to get my leather hammer. Okay, just kind of hold on to it. Those in sometimes they go in easier than others. Okay, now your nose piece. Light it on. And if you feel resistance in here, like it's tight or something, just get a Dremel and clean that just a little bit. Light it on. All right, that's about all you need to do. If you want to go just a little light tap or something, that's fine. Now, one thing I want to show you, you see on this right here on the edge, there's just maybe a couple thousandths left here. That's great. If you have 10 thousandths, that's fine. But if you're uptight against this, you may have up and down playing your spindle and you may need to replace your nose piece. So now over to this point, we're gonna put our set screw back in. Now this is where you, I don't know if you can see in here, I'm gonna loosen this just to show you. If you can see down in there, you notice there was a divot in there, now there is no divot. Now you have two options at this point. You can either get in there and drill in a new divot or you can just shorten this if you need to. I usually shorten the set screw because I have torn these apart where I've seen 10 and 12 holes. And so to me, it's just better to Shorten the set screw. See right there, I'm bottoming out and I'm I'm up here. So 
So I've got to take a little material off of my set screw. So what I do is I take it over to my belt sander. Shorten it. I always put it to a tip. Little blue Loctite. Then when you put this back in, you're just going to see where it touches here and just a tiny bit more and that's it. If you go too tight, you can actually mushroom out the bottom of your spindle and your last little bit of travel will be tight when you go up and in. So you see now that goes across, no problem. So there we go. Now we have done it. We have successfully disassembled and reassembled a spindle assembly and put it back in the quill. So thank you again for watching, and as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.